A reading from the writings of St. Peter, Julian, and Mard. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, continued. The meekness of Jesus scored its greatest, its greatest triumph in his virtue of silence. Jesus, who was come to regenerate the world, began by keeping silence in public for 30 years. And yet there were so many vices to reform in the world, so many wandering souls to bring back, so many imperfections in divine worship, so many transgressions among the Levites and the rulers of the nation. Our Lord reproves no one. He is content with praying, with doing penance, and with resisting evil and asking God's pardon for it. What beautiful things our Lord could have said during those 30 years for our instruction and consolation. He did not say them. He listened to the ancients and attended the instructions given in the synagogue by the scribes and the doctors of the law, just like a simple Israelite from the lowest rank of the people. He could have reprimanded and reformed delinquents, but he did not. It was not yet the time. He was uncreated wisdom, the word of God, the creator of speech and the source of truth. But he did not speak. He honored his father by his meek and humble silence. His silence tells us more eloquently than words, learn that I am meek and humble of heart. Spiritual communion, my Jesus. I believe that you are really present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as one who has already come and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. A reading from the Imitation of Mary. The happiness of a virtuous family continued. The head of the family would exercise his authority without being imperious or arrogant. The wife would agree with the attitudes of her husband and would exercise great care over her household. Both would have the consolation of seeing the growth of docile children who would in time walk the path of virtue. From such families, how much good would result for the whole society of the faithful? What lovable simplicity and way of life? What candor and innocence? What unity and love? What edification and marvelous fruits of holiness? How calmly the days would pass. And then the time would come to pay death the final tribute we would willingly offer the sacrifice of our lives because we would have the consolation of having lived in holiness and love of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mary, model of every virtue.